Yeah, I'm going to record this so that I can send it out to the other kids as soon as they get home. That way people that are confused um, about this don't, you know, have the best opportunity to do well on the exam. So you have the sum rule and the product rule. And when you use which one depends on the situation. So let's take a look at, at a situation similar to one, a question on the exam that you took today that you're finishing tomorrow. So let's assume that you have Susie, and Susie has, uh, has uh, you know what? No, uh, I don't know, whatever. Let's say uh, blue hair. Susie doesn't have to be human, right? Has blue hair. And Susie, um, Gosh, I'm trying to find this. Uh, Mary's a guy named Andy, and Andy, Andy has uh, black hair. They have children. Their first child is a is a boy, and that boy has black hair. All right, let's assume that, that, that uh, blue hair is recessive. All right? And black hair is dominant. Is that all right with everyone? Yeah. And then they have a girl, and the girl is, ha gets blue hair. All right. So what does that tell you right away about Andy? That's right, Andy, Andy's heterozygous, so Andy's, let's say, big B, little B, little B being blue. And Ma, Susie, mom, was what? Little B, little B. Little B, little B, that's right. So that part's easy, right? So the next question would be, what's the probability, what are the chances, that they're going to have a blue-haired boy? What are the chances you can have a blue-haired boy? Well, this is kind of an easy one, So, and there's a couple of these in the test, right? And the way you do it is the first thing I do is what's the, you have to find out what's the prob probability of getting blue, and then what's the probability of getting boy and boy. What are you going to do? Yeah. Right, but are you going to multiply or are you going to add those two probabilities together? Blue and boy. Somebody said multiply, why? Because and means product. So you're using the word and, that means they're, that they're, they're independent, right? And the product rules when things are independent. So boy, whether it's blue hair and a boy or blue hair and a girl, the blue doesn't impact the boy, right? It being boy or girl. Is that right? Yeah, right. So there's no, because they're independent, you're going to use the product rule. And because they're independent and you're, you're using the word and, so the two of them together. Okay, so blue and boy, so you have to figure out what are the odds of having a blue hair. That's number one. And so you take and you say, look at uh, mom was little b, little b, dad was big b, little b. Uh, his, the odds are big b, little b, little b, little b, big b, little b, and little b, little b. So there's a 50% chance. So one out of two, right, for blue hair. What are the odds for being a boy? One out of two, and so what are the odds of having then a, a blue? The next kid's gonna have blue hair, uh, blue uh, blue haired boy. It's gonna be one half times one half, which equals what? One out of four. That's the probability of having a blue haired boy. Does that make sense? What don't you get? Oh, you get it. Okay, good. No, if you didn't get something, I want you to ask now because I don't want you to wait till the end. When, uh, when we did it before, I thought the male, oh, the male did go at the top. And it, it does, yeah, that's usually the way it goes. But if you don't, if you do it some other way, that's fine. Again, I'm going to email you this. You don't have to yourself it, but I won't be able to email it until you get home. All right, so let's do another one that's like the one that everybody, that, um, where is it? I'm trying to look for it. Find it here. I'm 
if you and your spouse were going to have four kids, and you were asking yourself, what are the odds of us having, uh, what are the odds of us having three boys and a girl? Right. So that would mean, what are the odds of having? <coughs> what are the odds of us having a boy, three boys and a girl? So first, the first question is, how many different ways can I get three boys and a girl? Well, I can get. Let's let's think about it. I can get boy, 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 girl. Right. I can get boy, boy, girl, boy. I can get boy, girl, boy, boy. And I can get girl, boy, boy, boy. So there's four. That's right. That's the, the test. The test asks you about flipping coins. But you can tell, like, instead of big B, uh, instead of a little B and G, boy, girl, you could use H for heads and T for tail, right? So you can do the same thing. But I'm just going to go ahead and just do the math with this one because I don't want to give a direct answer to a question. So we're looking at this as four of them, right? There's four possibilities here. So, uh, so the question is then, what are the odds, right, that I'm going to get these, well, that we get three boys, uh, three boys and a girl? Well, first I have to figure out what are the, what are the odds I'm getting each one of these. There's a ratio, right? There's a, not a ratio, but a probability, right? And that's going to be 50-50 for each one. So that's one-half times one-half times one-half times one-half, right? And that's equal to what? 100. No. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. <laughs> one out of 16. I really don't want to play. I really don't have time. So the same thing all the way down, right? For each of these, the odds are one out of 16. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Okay, so now the question, so you can only get boys and girls, you can only get three boys and a girl one way. That's here, right? Right? And this, and this is a two boys and a girl and boys another way. But to get three boys and a girl, if you get it this way, you only get it this way. So what this, these are called, how are, what is the relationship here? Are these and? If you're only talking about having four kids, those are or. So you're either going to get it this way, or you're going to get it this way, or you're going to get it this way, or you're going to get it this way. So what do you have to do with those probabilities? Add. Add them. That's right. So you have to take 1 over 16 uh, plus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 16. Because they're not related. And initially, you, you did the, uh, the multiplication, but then you're asking yourself, how many, what's the probability of me having three boys and a girl? I have to consider all the possibilities. And because I'm going to have one or the other or the other, I'm going to add them together. So I'm going to have 4 out of 16, which is equal to what? 1 out of 8, right? Huh? Oh, yes, 4. Sorry, my bad. 1 out of 4, right? 4 times 4 is 16. Very good. So that's the odds are, if you ask me, what are the odds of having three boys and a girl? It's one out of four. And the reason it's one out of four is there's four different ways of getting three boys and a girl. I'm only going to be able to get three boys and a girl in one of those four ways. And what are the, so I'm asking, what are the, and so in order to find out what are the odds for each one, I'm multiplying, so a boy and a boy and a boy and a girl, and then I'm asking which one, I uh, can only have one or the other or the other. So that's how I do the math. I, I first multiply, then I add them together. So the yeah, the question? Order, order, you like, you, uh, it, hold on, it does matter the order in this question. That's why I had to consider them. Okay, yeah, next. Say that again.
Okay. So there would be a, a shortcut, and that would be, you're, you're talking about how could I do a shortcut. Uh, well, I know it was 1 out of 16 for each of these, right? But that's because I knew I had, oh, I hate to go back, but I'm, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. It's be boy, 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 girl. I have a uh, boy, uh, boy, girl, boy. I know, hold on a second. I can have a uh, boy, girl, boy, boy, or I can have girl, boy, 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 all right? So that's the order, right? So do I, is the girl the oldest or is the boy the oldest, which depends on the order, right? So I can only have one of these can happen. Only one of these can happen. And you're, so you can only have a boy, boy, if only one of these can happen for the, your birth order, right? If you're going to have children, you can only have, if you're going to have four kids, only one of these four is going to happen, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's one or the other, or they're mutually exclusive. You, if, one, if this one happens, the other three don't, right? So you have to consider the, all the odds. What so her, well, that's another story. We don't want to talk about that, but that's a good point. That's a possibility. There's all kinds of other things that can happen, right? But we're only going to consider the simple in this case. That's why they use a flipping a coin in the question, right? And even with flipping a coin, what if it lands on the end? Doesn't happen. Though. Okay, we're not talking. It does happen. So, with uh, let's talk about then your question. Can I, do I have? Can I make a shortcut? And yeah, you could. You see, you could make this. Think about it. That's equal to what? Isn't this equal to b cubed times g? What? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's e b cubed times g. And so is this one. And so is this one. And so is this one, isn't it? And so couldn't I do four times, four times B cubed times G? Isn't the math the same there? What is that? Right, it is. And so it'd be four times the probability of getting boys, which is one half, cubed, right? Times the probability of having a girl, which is one half. So I could, doing the math, three time, two times two times two is eight. So that would be one eight times one half is what? One times four. It's, it's, it'd be one sixteen. So it's four times one sixteen, which is equal to four sixteenths, which is equal to one over four. So I can get the right the same answer this way. So that is a that is a choice to make it shorter by using a formula, but still you're gonna have to do the it's pretty much the same math, there's two ways of doing it. Question? Like numbers no. Oh, can you say like one half, one half, one half, one half? No, no, no. I have a question. Why can't I just go one out of that four possibilities? Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. Why do you have to? Why do you have to do the or at all? Because you know it's one out of four. But sometimes won't right, some of them be the same? Like it'll be two. That's the same exact. Well, in this case, not. Uh, there's all kinds of, look, there's whole books written on probability. I'm just trying to address the questions around the test and the questions you're likely to get. If you notice, if you go back and look at your study guide, this exact problem is in your study guide, except this with, uh, yeah, something like this is exactly, it's in the chapter reading too, right? Remember the chapter reading? Remember me going over this in class? So this was all very clearly described there, all right? All right, so can I move to the next question, which was the question is the ratios. What about these ratios? Oh, my God. Yes, please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, um, does the dominant, wow. does it matter it's like when you're doing it? Yes. Doing what? Like the, the boy and girl thing. It it does if you're if you're asking a combination, right? So if I ask you, if I tell you that... Uh, that Crohn's disease is recessive, and I tell you that uh, that you had a child when you were younger that had Crohn's disease, and then you and your husband are about to have another kid, and you want to know what are the odds that that kid's going to have Crohn's disease, yeah. and what's the odds that that kid's going to be Crohn's disease and a girl? Does that make sense? 
So then, so your question is, let's say you and your husband are getting married. Now, oh, let's use somebody else. Jill, Jill and Jane, Jill and John are going to get married. Whoever are going to get married, and you get, uh, and you know that they're heterozygotes. So Jill has, uh, you know, uh, uh, big C, little C for Crohn's disease, and uh, let's use a Tim has uh, is also heterozygote. And so you say they have a kid who has Crohn's disease because they have one kid, one boy, who has little c, little c. What are the odds you're going to get a girl now with little c, little c? Another, uh, now a girl. Now you had a boy with Crohn's disease, has a girl. Now you got to figure out what are the odds of getting a girl, which would be one half, and what are the odds of getting Crohn's disease, which would be one quarter, and you'd have to multiply one half times one quarter to get one eighth, and that's your ad, that's your odds of getting a girl with Crohn's disease. I said that. That was on the test. When you asked oh us the half. What is this? How did you get the girl and the half and the fourth? Well, the fourth is doing a, a Punnett square. So this is one fourth. How do I get the one half for the girl? It's 50 50, girl or boy. Oh, okay. Oh. So, yes, it, can, it can't, you might have those things up. Which so now. Had the disease? Huh? Which parent had the disease? Neither one of them. They, had, they were headed, they were tr carriers. They, were, they, were, they had the recessive trait. So now, let's go ahead and now do, let's do a quick problem. Uh, let me go over the ratios with you. When you do a dihybrid cross, when you do. Big A, little A, assuming, assuming, assuming it's heterozygote, B, big B, little B, crossed with big A, little A, big B, little B. Ooh, we got to laugh. You're ha you're gonna, this one's going to produce some gametes, and this one's going to produce some gametes. Gametes only are going to give one of the, each of the alleles. So this parent, one parent's going to make... Uh, Big A, and remember we're going to do foil. You're going to big A, big B, and you're going to do big A, big, uh, big A, little B. So big A, big B is one possible sperm, right? Uh, big A, little B is another possible sperm. Little A, li uh, big B is another one, and last possible sperm is little A, little B. Those are all the sperms. Now the eggs, mom can make one big A, the same, the same, the same, Gametes, right? So there's the same choices. Now, when you do the, when you do this, it's going to produce a certain genotype and phenotype, and you can do it to be big A, big A, big B, uh, big B, and it's going to be big A, uh, big A, big B, little B. You're combining them. The right, egg so and the sperm are coming together. Like you're combining them. You have to make. You have to know which one of these you have and which one of these you have. Please watch a dihybrid cross video that I sent you last week that you have waiting in your Jupiter grades in my YouTube video. On my YouTube channel, there's an explanation of all of these, all bit by bit. You can watch your own lecture at the, at the convenience of your, uh, of your home. Big A, little A, big B, big B, etc. Okay, you can fill all that in. And what you get with the phenotypes, the phenotypes... The phenotypes, because look, all of these, pay attention before you leave. This one, I'm going to do a different color. Oops. This one and this one have the same phenotype, don't they? Yeah. Their genotypes are different. Why are their genotypes different? Well, because little this has a little b, this has a, two big b's. But their phenotypes are the same because they both in both genes, in both loci, they have a dominant gene. So you're going to see the dominant trait for both. So they're both going to look alike. It's just they're going to have different genotypes. So the phenotypic ratio is always for a dihybrid cross. And by the way, what's the dimensions of a dihybrid cross? Four, four by four, right? So you're going to have, they're going to have the, the ratio is going to be nine to three to three to one. That's always the ratio for a dihybrid cross with heterozygous parents. It's always it. There's no other way around it. You're going to have nine of the dominants. The dominant ones are going to be the ones you have the most of, right? So there's going to be nine of them, that big A, big B. 
in all kinds of different combinations. And then you'll have three that have a different set of combinations of three. And then you're only going to have one that's going to be little a, little a, little b, little b. Only one. In other words, one that's going to be recessive for both traits. All right, so it's 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. So these are kind of your heterozygotes. Uh, and this is, this, is, this is all the dominance only. So these three, like this one will be little b, little b, and one of the tri, and one. And these will all be little b, little b. There's three ways to get that. And then there's three ways to get uh, little a, little a, for instance, or big B, big B, or whatever. Okay? All right, yeah? So, just to make sure I was saying it right, um, we're a mono hybrid or mono hybrid? Mono hybrid. Don't go because I want to explain the test cross before you go. There's like three questions on test about test cross. I'd like to explain that up. I'm going to put it on the video. That's no problem. You're not going to be able to ask me questions. What's your que do you have a question that's, be that's worth more than a test cross question? Okay, the monohybrid. Mm. Isn't it a one to two to one? Is that um, Okay, yeah, that's a good question. That is worth, it, worth your time. So what are the different kinds of combinations I can get out of, out of a monohybrid cross? Right? So kind of, well, let's think about it. What could you, what could you do with a monohybrid cross? Well, you could have a big A, little a, and a big A, little a. Notice that it's only one, one gene, so monohybrid. You could have a big A, little a, with a little a, little a, right? Or you could have a big A, big a, with a little a. Uh, am I doing that right? A little a, right? I guess you could do another one, I suppose. And you could do, uh, what would the other one be? Big A, big A with, ooh, what am I doing? Sorry, I don't want the colors to stay the same. Big A, big A with a big A, little A, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the possibilities. So let's take a look at what we would get with that. They say big A, big A, big A, little A, et cetera. I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to talk about it because I, I hear myself droning on, and it just, it really uh, hurts me. <laughs> it irritates the heck out of me. Okay, with this one here, the, oh my God, the genotypic, genotypic ratio, okay, is here is going to be, uh, genotypic is what? One to two to one. One of these to two of these, right, to one, uh, to one of these, right? Okay, one to two to one. One to two to one. To one. Now, I mean, one to two. Sure, one to two to one. It's listed right here. Now, your phenotypic ratio is is going to be something slightly different, and that's this. Uh, that's this thing here. This the all the capital A's are all going to be the same, right? They're all going to look alike. That's your phenotype. So it's what three to what three to one. So that's the ratios if you had this, right? So that's a possibility, 3 to 1 or 1 to 2 to 1. Now this one here is what? This one here would be one of the, this would be one phenotype, and this would be the other phenotype. So here you have what? 1 to 2. And, and it happens the genotype and the phenotype here would be the same, right? And down here you'd have one of these or this one, or you'd get this one, right? So again, you'd have what? One to two. So these two are pretty much the same, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So one to two is also a possibility with a monohybrid cross. And then over here with this one, you'd have one of these. Oh, yeah. All of these would be number one. So this is actually 100% because this is the two true breeding ones that are coming together. That's two homozygotes coming together. And you're going to get 100% heterozygous. So those are kind of your... Uh, uh, now, comes the one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one -to -one that someone started asking about earlier. Let's talk about that quickly because we're out of time. So when we're doing test crosses, when you're doing a test cross, you have to remember what is it you have. You either have, you have this thing that's purple, and purple, I'm just using purple as an example, it can be anything that's dominant. So you have this dominant trait. You don't know if it's homozygous dominant or it's heterozygous because because it's dominant, you can't tell. So you cross it with the white. You cross it with the white. Why? Because the white is recessive. And so what that means, if you have two possibilities, you're going to have 
Big P, Big P, Little P, and uh, I'm sorry. Let me redo that. Little P, Little P, right? So you get you can you can have a cross where you have uh, Big P, Little P, Little P, Little P, uh, Big P, Little P, and uh, Little P, Little P. So you're gonna have 50% white. That's only gonna happen if you have a heterozygote. This is called the test cross. You're trying to see if these purple are heterozygote. Because if they're not heterozygote, if those purple are homozygous dominant, then when you do the when you do this cross, that's my wife. And she, it's time for me to go. If you do this cross, they're all going to be they're all be dominant. So they're all going to be on 100%. Now, when you see one to one to one to one, guess what? You test cross. But you're doing a test cross with how, what kind of? A monohybrid or dihybrid? A mono. Yeah. One to one to one to one to one. Different than a dihybrid. Must be dihybrid. So you get, so you get A, big this, or you can have, uh, uh, how about big hold on, let me do this. Uh, big A, uh, little, uh, maybe little A, uh, uh, little B, uh, uh, I do, hold on, I gotta do this right in my head. I gotta get this done. Hold on a second. Uh, you can do, uh, I guess, uh, big A. I think we cross with the same, and big A. Oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Big A, big B, big A, little B, uh, little A, little B. Or uh, little a, big B. So those are the four possibilities, right? If you have a diet, if oh god, help me, Jesus Christ! I have to go. My wife is waiting for me. She's gonna be upset. You need to pay attention to what I'm saying. I am. So this is the possible gametes that this that this person can produce. When because we don't know if this if this person is let's say is red. Uh, and round, and red and round are both dominant traits. We can't tell if this person's heterozygous or homozygous for those traits. So what we do is we cross it with someone who's homozygous, rec uh, uh, recessive for both those traits. So we'd cross it with little a, little a, little b, little b. That's what we would cross it with. How many different gametes can this person produce, this homozygous recessive? Only one. What is the gamete that it can produce? What is that one? It can only produce a little a, a little b. Can it produce anything else? Right, I know you're confused about the terminology, that's fine. So then your, your cross would be this, wouldn't it? So you'd get big A, little a, big B, little b. You'd get little a, little a, little b, little b. Big A, little a, little b, little b. Uh, big A, uh, little B, little A, little A, big B, little B. Guess what? Each of these is different, isn't it? And you'd only get one of these each. One to one to one. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about genotype or phenotype. So a test cross is the answer. All right? So you need to think about these. All right, I'll send these to you. Have a good one. Okay. Um, while you're walking out, what's, what are the other chronic crosses called? Huh? What are the other kind of crosses called? Like test cross, isn't it like a... Test cross and then the rest are just homozygous, dominant, heterozygous, etc. No, like on the test it says something like recessive cross or something. But it was an all, I don't know. I forgot the word. Like that. You don't remember? No. I don't remember. But I have to go. I'm four minutes late. My legs are covered. I'm going to just borrow it. You can have them. Sharpen them before you leave. Have a good one. I'll have them. Don't take, I bought them for the class. Child, don't bother me a ton. You got a class. I have to go. Hello? I'll just take a few. Hey, baby, I'm coming. I'm on my way. I'll just take a pack, okay? Hello? Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Sorry, sorry. It's the